Good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is Tuesday, and it is time for our daily devotion. So I am on St. John's Facebook page hosting a live event so that we might get together and just spend a few moments in devotional time together. Come and join me if you would. Take a moment as you get here to leave a comment so that I can say good morning to you as you do. And here in a couple minutes, I'll tell you what our scripture reading is. We use the upper room devotion, so we'll be reading the devotional. We read the scripture, the devotion itself, take a moment to reflect on it, and then take time to pray. So we'll be reading all of that today. That'll be part of our it'll be our devotion time. Excuse me. Several of you are here. Great to have you. Good morning, Linda. So glad you are here. Hi, Stacy. Good morning to you. Hi, Shirley. Good morning. I have a fly in my office. It's going to be in my ointment here in a minute, I have a feeling. Good morning, Marie. How are you today? It's kind of odd, probably kind of odd for you all to see my background change to my office for two days in a row. I'm trying to trying to get a little more reacclimated to actually making it out of the house and and going to the church office and spending some time here on a weekly basis tell you what that year and a half of just sitting at my own dining room table that's a that's a habit I'm not sure if it's bad or good but it's a habit hi Jack hi Pat good morning to you Marie you are correct it is another beautiful day hi Susan good morning to you hi Barbara hi Chris glad that you are here as well we are going to be reading out of 2nd Corinthians chapter 9 2nd Corinthians chapter 9 for you Bible scholars, you know this is Paul's third letter to the church in Corinth, but we only have his second and his third, so we call him first and second. Yeah, you can go look that up. <laughs> the only reason we know that is in 1 Corinthians, Paul actually says, In my previous letter to you, so that indicates that he actually had written to them before, it's just not a letter that became uh, a circular letter. It was not something that was collected and kept as part of church tradition and incorporated into the New Testament. So we have his second letter and his third letter. But we're going to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 9. All those tidbits that you just really didn't care to know. All right. Our prayer of illumination as we begin. Centering ourselves... O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 15 says, The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, He who scatters abroad, he gives to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity and will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgiving to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ, 
and by the generosity of your sharing with him and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. So thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Our author today is Enid Ada, and I am not going to try to pronounce Enid's last name. Enid's from Tanzania. Uh, focus verse is Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17, which says, Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the poor and will be repaid in full. Believe it or not, I'm actually using that as a part of our going deeper for this coming Sunday as well. So remember that verse. Hang on to it. All right. Here is Enid's um, devotion for us. I first met MZ in a um, hotel. His eyes were sunken, his back was bent, and he was walking with the support of a stick. I was moved with compassion as I watched him order a cup of tea. Later on, I inquired as to who he was and where he lived. A young man took me to MZ's home, and I could not believe what I saw. He was sitting alone in front of his house. The roof and the walls were made of grass, and the walls had holes large enough for a person to fit through. I learned that his wife and relatives had deserted him, leaving him to struggle to provide for himself in his old age. Around his house, I could see the small gardens he cultivated. I decided to offer him food each week, even though I don't have much myself. The seed I have been sowing may seem small, but it's helping MZ. For this I am glad, and recently I have seen God providing for me in a similar way. When a friend came to stay for two weeks, she gave me money to buy groceries and help me pay for other things as well. Before she left, she asked if she could continue to send me money to help for groceries. Just as God prompted me to help MZ, I believe that through my friend, God is helping me. So the thought for the day is, I can provide help for others as God provides for me. Um, I know You all know that I've been to Nicaragua a couple of different times. We've done some things to support uh, folks through the Rainbow Network. Primarily our work that we do is to support high school students to make sure that they are able to transition. Uh, in uh, Nicaragua, you only get to go to school up to a certain age, and that's for free on the government. After that, you have to be able to pay for it, and that's to even be able to graduate from high school. You have to have financial support, so we try to financially support some students each year. One of the other things that the Rainbow Network does is, is they build houses in local areas, particularly in the coffee areas where coffee is grown and up on the farms, because most of the folks who live in those areas today, they live in things that I, I don't even know if you could really call them a home or a shelter. They are old scrap pieces of wood and stick they often, if they can find it, have corrugated tin and metal, usually on their roofs, tarps. You know, it's, it's a one to maybe a two room at the most kind of little shanty. They build some kind of open fire pit kind of kitchen that is also a part of it. Uh, they use fresh water out of the streams for their water sources. The government has been um, putting in public latrines for them to be able to use, so they've been doing that. But And then they, they, they um, pirate their electricity off of the electricity cables that are, in, and then they'll run it to get at least one little light of some kind, and sometimes a TV in there. But it, it is just, it, it's, it's fascinating to watch this and, and see that people actually can survive in these kind of conditions. Their food is pretty basic. It is usually some kind of rice and beans, meats not very often in their meals, you know, things like that. So it's pretty basic kinds of things. Believe it or not, a house right now it used to be about $4,500 to build a house. It's up to about $5,300 is what it costs to build a house right now. And you think about that. Most of us probably spend more on our vacations 
than what it would cost to build one house for somebody in Nicaragua. You know, it, it's just kind of crazy, uh, you know, that, that you can do something like that fairly economically. But they have teams through Rainbow Network that that's what they do. They go down and they help to build houses. And they're starting some in a new community down there and they're going to build houses. One of the things they make the families do is they make them work. So if they're going to do a block of 10 houses, they make the families that want one of those houses work on all 10 of them. Once all 10 of them are finished, then they have a lottery to see who gets which one of them out of the 10 families. So it's not like, you know, a family works on one of them once it's finished, then someone gets to occupy it and then they no longer have to work to help anybody else. They have to build all 10 of them before any of them can be occupied. That makes it fair and equitable, right? I think about what it means for us to be able to sow seeds. What are the seeds of compassion that we sow as a community, as individuals? How are we sowing those in what areas? And the blessings that can come back from them. You know, we are blessed in many ways by God, and God invites us to be a blessing. To be people who lend to the poor as if we are lending to God knowing that God will provide for us and already has in many ways. So think about the ways in which you can be a provider for those who are in need. What are the ways in which you are being generous and giving, either through your church or maybe to um, something that you're being philanthropic through? But let's do it in a way in which we feel as if we are lending to the Lord himself. For actually what we're doing, friends, if you think about it, is we're really just giving back to God what God has given to us. We're being, we're being ones who recognize the blessing and the generosity of God in our own lives by giving it away to someone else. So let's think of ways this week in which we can be people who can give away, can give away to those who are in need because God has so richly and generously given to us. Let's sow good seeds of compassion this week. Would you pray with me? Dear God, help us to be willing to share, to share with others what you have given to us, particularly those who have less than us. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Well, thanks everybody for being here today. Cherry, I see that you are watching. I'm glad you're here. We have you in our prayers today. Marcella, glad that you made it as well. Dear friends, come and join me tomorrow for our time of daily devotion. We'll be on here at 1145. I'll look forward to seeing you then. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy the rest of this really beautiful Tuesday. Not going to be too bad. So may God's grace and peace be with you, and I will look forward to seeing you tomorrow.